Today we'll be discussing concept of progymnosperms. Progymnosperms were important components of the vegetation from the Middle Devonian through the Lower Mississippian. As their name implies, they were like the gymnosperms, but not quite. The gymnosperms are believed to have appeared during Upper Devonian and Lower Carboniferous in Paleozoic era, approximately 350 million years ago. The progymnosperms are an extinct group of woody, spore-bearing plants uh, that is presumed to have evolved from the trimerophytes and eventually gave rise to the gymnosperms. Now, trimerophytes, they are an extinct group of Devonian era plants considered ancestral to the majority of the modern vascular plants, including ferns, seed plants, and horsetails. Uh, they are characterized by a distinctive three lobed xylem shape in a stem cross section, a branching pattern that involves lateral branches and lack of true leaves. Like the true gymnosperms, progymnosperms commonly had scantry growth of their vascular tissues, that is, they produced wood, and some grew to be tall trees. Unlike the gymnosperms, however, they didn't produce seed. Uh, but rather released their spores as do ferns. Some progymnosperms were homosporous, producing many identical spores, while others were heterosporous, producing two different kinds of spores. Heterosporous progymnosperms uh, are thought to be ancestors, or at least close relatives of the uh, seed plants. Two major groups of progymnosperms are recognized. First is Archaeoteridales and the second one is neurophytales. A third group that is protobetales is sometimes recognized but is poorly known and its relationship to other plants is unclear. So uh, they have been treated formally at the rank of vision uh, progymno uh, spomophyta or progymno uh, spomopsida. In late Devonian times, another group of progymnosperms gave rise to the first really large tree known as Archaeopteris. So, in general, all progymnosperms have shrubby to uh, herborescent habit with a pattern of little branching in which no auxiliary buds are produced. The ultimate appendages are either dichotomously branched units uh, as in uh, the uh, neurophytales or laminate leaves with dichotomous vignation in the arcuitary deals. The current consensus is that progymnosperms are paraphyletic and the leaves of arcuitary deals are potentially homologous with those of the seed plants. The vascular system of, in progymnosperms consists of eustele, a steel type that consists of strands of vascular tissues called uh, sympodia embedded in the parenchymatous ground tissues. So, these free uh, means uh, the sporing plants produced fusiform suprachia that were born along the adaxial or lateral surface of small axis that have been termed fertile leaves. Both homosporous and heterosporous forms are known. So, although as a group of progymnosperms continue to be poorly understood, they provide the most convincing evidence of the lineage ancestral to the seed plants. First of all, we will start with the uh, first group of progymnosperms that is uh, Alcuteridales. Alcuteridales were spore bearing plants and uh, possessed a cambium with robust woody growth. This combination of trait is not found in any living plant since all uh, uh, extant spore bearing plants lack robust woody growth. So, the group is named after the Texan RQ terrace, which is the earliest known woody tree found in the fossil record in Middle Devonian. So, this plant had fawn like foliage uh, that bore suprangia on specialized of fertile leaves, which is uh, uh, the form genus of uh, RQ terrace. For many years, it was assumed that Arcuteris was a fern until uh, 1960s when Charles Beck 
uh, was able to demonstrate that these fern like leaves were actually connected to fossil wood known as Kelly xylon. So, from uh, a distance, these plants probably appeared quite conifer like, but upon close inspection, the leaves would appear fern like, and these trees were a major component of the late Devonian and Mississippian ecosystem and uh, may have uh, played a role in late Devonian extinction event. The most common member of uh, Archaeotaridales is uh, Archaeotaris. So now I will uh, tell you about the Archaeotaris. Archaeotaris is the earliest known woody tree found in the fossil record and uh, uh, known from uh, the North America, Russia, China, uh, the Europe and Australia. Now, just look at this uh, figure. This is Archaeotaris. So, lateral branch system of Archaeotaris were pseudomonopodial in nature, developing from primordia, uh, that means not from axillary buds. Leaves are helically arranged but appear opposite and decusate. Uh, 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 in decusate manner. Now, lamina of the leaf was high variable, that is, uh, dissected entire of weight uh, and um, uh, anisophily uh, is occur in some species. Now, fertile ultimate axis is usually occur at the basal most units of the branching system, and fertile leaves are helically arranged on fertile axis with the two rows of fusiform. Suprangia. So, you can see here these are the sterile leaves and these are the fertile leaves with suprangia. Heterospore is present in Archaeotaris and the most common species of Archaeotaris is Archaeotaris uh, heliana, Archaeotaris um, uh, obtusa. Next group of uh, progymnosperm is neurophytales. Neurophytales uh, are commonly considered the most primitive of the progymnosperms. They were some of the first plants on earth to produce robust wood from the cambium, similar to the modern tea trees. Neurophytales lacked leaves. They used a small photosynthetic stem to uh, means for photosynthesis. Some neurophyte uh, were large woody vine that grew in between the earth's earliest uh, tree-like plants. The most common uh, characteristic of neurophyte tails are uh, three dimensional branching system, lateral axis uh, were helicot uh, or uh, decusate. Then uh, these plants were probably small, shrubby, or vine like, uh, ribbed or lobed protostyle in the center of the stem, displaying mesarch uh, condition. Then protoxylum surrounded by uh, pycnozylic wood formed from the cambium. Then no laminate leaves, ultimate appendages, they are dichotom uh, dichotomized, they were assumed to be photosynthetic. Then adventitious uh, roots arises from the stem, then reproduction, suprangia born on the ultimate fertile appendages, they were homosporous, as you can see here, these are the suprangia, and uh, uh, plants belong to this order, neuro, uh, and neurophyte tails, they were homosporous and suprangia were elongated, pointed with late means later uh, to tip and base uh, dehiscence. Now, spores are radial, uh, trilate, and uh, pseudo -sacred. Common number of uh, neurophyte tails is neurophyton. Neurophyton uh, means in middle late Devonian of Europe. Russia and United States. Its branches are arranged helically and rather than decusately. So, dichotomous ultimate branches in neurophyton were photosynthetic but unwrapped and sometimes interpreted as leaves. So, they were determinate in nature. In the fertile axis, ultimate branches are replaced by dichotomies, uh, means dichotomies with multiple homosporous suprangia. I can see here these are suprangia rising along the length of the each fork of the branch. Suprangia here, I can see here, suprangia appear to recurve toward the center of the dichotomy, but this may be uh, an uh, artifact of uh, uh, preservation. 
So the main axis of neurophyton had lobed protostyle and produced a small amount of scandry xylem from astigmatic regions between the lobes. So axes are relatively cylinder, uh, suggesting wine growth uh, form. Thank you.